calculating probability. We're having a little bit more of an in-depth look at calculating probability. You probably already know how to find the probability of an event happening, but we do have to put down exactly what we're doing when we, count, when we find that probability as a fraction. And it's a big fraction to write out. We put, so I'm, I can't even fit it in here, it's going to come down here. The number of times that the event is in the sample space. A lot of people will talk about that as being the number of ways that event could happen, divided by the total number of outcomes in the sample space. Now when you think of that, it's quite a large wordy sort of formula. We don't need to know um, the correct notation formula at this stage, but we do need to be able to write the probability of an event as PR or P with brackets and some abbreviation or description of the event inside the brackets. So this says the probability of an event. It says the same thing as that. We can, if we want, write this as N for number and E. E means event, the number of ways the event occurred in the sample space over the total number of outcomes in the sample space. So this is actually this formula written much more quickly, much more easily. But as long as you remember how to find probability, you don't actually need to write either of these formulae. We also need to be able to find the probability of complementary events. Now you'll remember that the probability of an event happening and of it not happening must add up to one. So the probability of E plus the probability of E not happening must be one. That means if you want to find the probability of the event not happening, probability of the complement of the event, that will be 1 minus the probability of the event. We'll use this later and you'll see how it works because I know this notation is a little bit confusing and you don't have to use this. You can just remember how to get the probability of a complementary event. That will be fine. So some examples. The numbers 1 to 10 are written on cards and 1 is drawn at random. Now if we needed to check our sample space, that's 1, 2, So that's our sample space. What's the probability that I get a prime number? How many prime numbers are there? Now one is neither prime nor composite. So two, three, not four. Do we remember the definition of prime? Only has itself and one as a factors. So two factors only. Five, but not six. Seven, not eight, not nine, not 10. So there's one, two, three, four prime numbers out of 10 total outcomes, so that simplifies to 2 over 5. So I counted the number of times the event happened in the sample space and put it over the number of things in the sample space. That's it. The probability of getting an 8 or a 9. Basically, I will be happy. I will win the game, whatever it is, if I get an 8 or a 9. So how many of the outcomes satisfy that event? This one and this one. That's 2 out of 10 or 1 out of 5. Now notice that was or. Either an 8 or a 9 would make me happy, would satisfy the event. Here I've got the probability that it's odd and less than 7. The and means it has to be both. So my odd numbers are 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 but I only want odd numbers that are less than 7. Now, less than 7, 7 doesn't count because 7 is not less than 7. So my only odd numbers less than 7 are 1, 
3 and 5. Now, if you, sometimes you'd get asked to give the sample space of that event. The sample space of the event is 1, 3, 5. So it's listing only the outcomes that satisfy that event happening. So that's three outcomes out of a total of 10. So and means both characteristics have to be present or means either is fine. Here's another one. The probability that my number is at least five. Now when you hear at least, that includes five. So if I said you have to pick up at least five pieces of rubbish and you came back with exactly five, would I be able to complain? No, I wouldn't. You had picked up at least five. So you've got to remember that definition. So that at least five means five and anything above it is fine. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six out of 10, which simplifies to three out of five. And now I've got the probability that a number is not prime. So when I'm finding a complementary event, I could just count up all the not prime numbers, but I've already counted all the prime numbers. I had four out of 10, I got two out of five. You've got two options for finding the complement of an event. You can do one, take away the probability of the event happening. Now one, in this case, if I'm subtracting, one take away two fifths will lead me with three fifths. Or you can just think the probability of the event's complement is the probability of its event, whatever's left out of the total number of outcomes. I had two out of the total of five, whatever's left is three out of the total of five. So if you don't really like this formula, one minus the event, just work it out, that's fine. We do get a lot of problem solving questions with probability, such as this one. Nine blue and red counters are placed in a bag and one is drawn at random. Now they haven't told me how many of each, but they've told me that the probability that it is blue is two thirds. Find the probability that it's red. Now red is the complement of blue in this case because there's only blue and red. So that will be one minus two thirds. So the probability of it being red is one third. Now what are they asking for here with this n? You might remember from the front that n means the number of red counters. So this won't be a fraction. They're asking for the number of red counters. We know there's nine counters all up and I know that one third of them are red. So I'll have to find one third of nine. Now, when you were doing a third, I do know that that's divide by three, so the answer will be three. But if it was a tricky fraction, of means times, so that's one third times nine over one as a fraction. I'm multiplying fractions, so I can cancel out my threes. Three divided by three is one. Nine divided by three is three. Oops, wrong color. One times three is three. three one times one is one. So there's three red counters. Now I know that's a little bit of a complicated way to find one third of nine, but I just thought I'd mention the multiplication of the fraction. And then of course the number of blue counters, you don't even need to do the maths. If there's three red, there must be nine minus three is six blue counters. So we've done some problem solving. We've worked out how many counters there were for the, from the probability. Two more red counters are added to the original set. Now you might want to write down the sample space if you got confused, because we started with six blue and three red, and then I added two more reds to my original set. Now what's the probabilities? The probability of getting blue, there's still six blue counters, but now there's two extra counters, it's out of 11. And the probability of red, that's still the complementary events. So six out of 11 means I've got five out of 11 probability of red.